I'm Robert Scoble, and you might know me as a Google Glass enthusiast. I've been uh, wearing this for a month now, uh, this wearable computer. But Google's not the only one that's going to be playing in this space. I've started seeing prototypes coming out of China and other places, and today I'm really happy to have Recon Instruments. Now, you, you might not know Recon, but I have these uh, Oakley Airwave ski goggles or the Smith uh, uh, goggles that have a little display down here and tell me all sorts of fun stuff. So they've been around the block. They've been building wearable computers for a couple of years now. We're going to hear all about what's going on and what these new products are right now from Recon Instruments. Hope like a second. And who are you? Thanks for having us uh, here today, Robert. Uh, Hamid Abdullahi, I'm technology officer and founder at Recon Instruments. Uh, year 2008 it was that I was doing my graduate studies at the University of British Columbia up in Vancouver. And I got together with a great group of uh, students working on a very cool concept. So that uh, actually the story started in 2006. That's when we, we got together and founded the company in 2008. My background goes uh, back um, to mechanical engineering and design. Um, on, under my father's guidance, he's also a mechanical engineer and uh, uh, basically in, in robotics and control. So that's how I got into the whole design and electronics space. Um, a after working for uh, you know in industry for uh, couple of years I started my graduate studies and got together with the, the, this group of uh, students that uh, we finally founded a company. Yeah. So, and, uh, who are you? Um, my name is Tyson Miller. I am the director of consumer products at Recon Instruments. Um, I came, came from a web marketing background, uh, was involved in some kind of app startups. Um, the whole time I was doing that I was a triathlete or a wannabe athlete, uh, and I stumbled ac across Recon a couple of years now, a couple of years ago now, uh, and kind of saw what Recon was doing and said, "This is gonna. I think this is gonna really change some of the sports that are out there that I'm doing right now," uh, and jumped on board pretty quickly after that. So, you guys are wearing this new product. What What are you wearing, first of all? Um, so I, I, I can speak to that and you can, yeah. Hamid can jump in as well. So what we're looking at here is our new heads-up display sunglasses called Recon Jet. Uh, Recon Jet delivers information instantly, unobtrusively, uh, direct to eye. Uh, it's a powerful computing platform with a lot of connectivity options and a comprehensive set of sensors on board. I can get more into the uh, specifics later, but it's definitely a product that we think is going to really change the way people uh, do activities and play sports. Yeah, so this is made for the sports uh, market. Glasses, you know, sunglasses cost four, 300, 400, 500 dollars per exactly. Oakley anyways. Yeah. Um, this adds probably not that much cost, right? It's in the well, we're not, so, you know, we're, this is an early version of our early days of the product. Uh, we came here to show kind of the potential, uh, yeah. you know, at Google I.O., the potential of this. Uh, so we're not, uh, you know, announcing prices right now or what it will cost. But uh, if you look at our current web website for our products that are out there, that kind of give you an idea of where. Yeah, because the uh, Oakley or the Smith goggles were six hundred fifty dollars and sold out. Congrats. Uh, the, thanks. Yeah. Congrats on uh, having a successful product launch <laughs> last last Christmas. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. There, uh, the Oakley Airwaves is about six hundred bucks. Um, this product, I can't say what it'll be, but it'll be quite affordable. Uh, and you know, I think there will be a lot of value there for, for different people who are you know, into activities and, and looking for direct eye information that they never had before. Now, for people who don't know who Recon is, because you guys build not just the screen, not just mm -hmm. the display, but the full system, the, sure. the controller, the software that I see, the software on my iPhone or my Android phone, right? Yep. Is that, is that true? It is true. Okay. And maybe Hamid can speak to that a little bit more. Yeah. yeah so the, the Recon is supposed to be, we're, we're a company of uh, 50, 50 right now in Vancouver. We have um, uh, basically covered a variety of different engineering fields from optics to RF design and electronics. And uh, the software that basically sits on board of this device, plus the, the web, web connectivity and some of the services we, we run in the back, uh, back end. 
Uh, so all in all, we have we have the whole team uh, in place under one roof. Yeah, and I don't think that's typical. I mean, they, the, the the nice thing about that is you can go in there and, and tweak the product, and you see prototypes come out, and everything's being built in house. And they put a prototype on your desk, you're like, wow, this is amazing. This was just built here. 3D printers, we have like everybody there, so it's. it's and we cool. just had a 3D printer company right before you. Cool, so. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> we <laughs> talked all about that. Yeah. It's been a great day. Yeah. Now, what do you? Uh, where should we go with this? Because with Google Glass, people are, are who have now seen the product understand it takes pictures yep. or lets me answer a phone call sure. and take video yep. and get directions to places. Sure. You guys are are not using the Google Glass OS. It's a it's your own OS that's sitting on top of Android, if I remember right. Right. That's uh, that's 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 correct. So it's an open source uh, operating system. Uh, but heavily customized and optimized for uh, the heads-up display experience that we are bringing to activity in sports, uh, being the interaction part of it, power management side of it, yep. or how it deals with display and displaying uh, basically different contextual data, uh, so the screen size, the, the colors, and uh, how it manages you know, power, screen, sh shutting down the screen and turning it back on. Uh, those areas we've been heavily working on with experiences on the Snow product that we had and now basically all, all going into this platform. So I, I love the Oakley Airwave, or I had both the Smith uh, Smith Micro, Smith Micro's uh, ski goggles, I forget yep. the name of their I.O. I.O. Yep. and Airwave on the Oakley side. Yep. It was basically the same display, same controller, a little bit different on the apps on iPhone and Android sure. apps, right? Yep. Yep. Um, that that product lets you see all sorts of stuff in that display, like uh, how fast were you going, yep. where on the mountain you were, uh, how long your hang time was if you if you jumped. I I never leave the snow on purpose, so <laughs> mine was always zero. Yeah. <laughs> if it's never not zero, always. it was a mistake. So yeah. somebody made a bad mistake, yeah. and I'm flying through somewhere. Did you, ever, did you ever try it throwing it up in the yeah, air? Yeah, yeah, we tried that, it, it, and it works. So we, we were with some really good skiers, and they. Put it on and, and show that it actually does yeah. work and it ca captures your hang time. It also, if you have your family uh, using the iPhone app or the Android app, you can mm -hmm. see where they are on the mountain too. Exactly. Yep. Which is really exactly. pretty cool. Yeah. So how does this is made for what a, a triathlete or a motorcyclist or something? Well, like that? right now, kind of you know, talking what, from what Hamid just said there with you know our, the operating system. The operating system that we're showing here is completely open. Uh, are running, it runs native apps and are, we have an open SDK. So really, the way we kind of see it is we, we go after verticals, like we went into the ski, uh, snow, snow sports market. Yeah. Uh, we are definitely gonna launch a product on our platform to another vertical or a few other verticals. Uh, but for now, it's kind of, with the, in, in these early days, it's kind of, here's the product, it's open, it runs native apps, um, you know, we'll see what happens with it. And I, I think there'll be, there'll be, developers will come up with stuff that we never even thought of. Uh, and you know, even with our Snow product, uh, we started seeing some of that with putting an SDK online, uh, you know, getting contacted almost daily from different people saying, hey, I took your, your heads up display and I put it into a paintball mask. Or now I'm flying an ultralight, uh, uh, I'm flying an ultralight and I have an instrumentation. I never had that before. So you know, it's, with this, who knows, it's a different form factor that you know, a lot more people are, are used to, yep. you know, sunglasses. And I, I mean, to boot, it has an awesome, uh, it has great polarized lenses on it, and so it's a good pair of sunglasses. It, this is internet connected, right? It, it, are, are you talking to Bluetooth to a phone, or it, tell me how it how it? It's, it's, it's hybrid. So uh, most of the data, uh, it's it's a pretty standalone uh, platform that has sensors and GPS on board. Uh, it knows where you are, what temperature is outside, uh, detects location and activity. Uh, in the same time, for uh, activating some more advanced connected uh, features, you can always uh, connect to a companion app on uh, both Android and iOS um, for getting, you know, web connectivity. Yeah. So with, with the web connect connectivity, I mean, I, I can use Google Glass to get directions sure. and uh, see all sorts of stuff from the internet. I can go, OK Glass, Google, and exactly. then say Recon Instruments, and it brings me back all sorts of information. That exactly. Recon so that's stuff. that's why we are here at Google I.O., just to communicate this openness of the platform and uh, showcase uh, how developers can develop you know, various apps using these services. So web connectivity services being one of them. Yep. Yep. You pair web connectivity, and then you know there is a microphone on board. 
uh, all the processing power is there to. Is there a to, speaker as well? There is. Uh, and so is it a full on phone, sort of like Google Glass, I can make a phone call and listen to it and well, talk I, without I'll, pulling my phone out? Yeah, like our Snow product does that right now. Our Snow product lets you answer a phone call. Uh, we're still kind of working on what the feature set's going to be at launch. Okay. So it does have capabilities like that. Uh, definitely, yeah, you can answer a call with our Snow product and you can get a text message. Uh, so that stuff is there, it comes from the phone. Um, but we're not exactly, we haven't locked all that stuff down yet or definitely not announcing it yet. Yeah. People are asking, why wearables? Why now? Why, why not just stick with a cell phone or something that's on your arm or something like that? And I, for my, my answer is, one, you want a display in your eye all the mm -hmm. time, sort of like a, a speedometer you want on your car right in front of you, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but part of it also is the sensors, because uh, with my cell phone, I don't know where that phone's aimed at right now. Even mm -hmm. though it has a compass sure. on it, you don't know that I'm aiming that direction okay. and yeah. you're aiming this direction. Yeah. We can do stuff with that in mm -hmm. software, right? To mm -hmm. know, hey, which way on the trail are we looking? Yeah. Where are we looking? What, what is our behavior? Yeah, exactly. Tell me a little bit about what you're thinking about sensors here. Well, this, uh, that's uh, that's what it is uh, these days with the uh, this improvements in the sensor technology and miniaturization and power uh, re reduction uh, on all of these sensors. Uh, it makes the um, it makes the platforms very versatile into adding a, a, a more precise, for example, heading service that will tell you exactly what you're looking at and make the the whole experience more contextual in future if you want it to, to be. Um, so How contextual are you able to be right now? Cause it, like, uh, I have this Moves app on my iPhone sure. that, that knows whether I'm riding a bike, walking, running, or driving. Yeah. When I took it skiing, it had no clue what I was doing, right? So yeah, it, are you with, looking with at the amount of sensors like and location uh, services that we have on board, this, I guess, guy is the limit. So you know uh, the, the, the user's speed, location, temperature outside, uh, the activity accelerometer gyroscope yeah, acceleration heading, all on there yeah, yeah. and then uh, yeah altitude we know if you're on a ski run we know a bunch of different things about you yeah so yeah and, uh, I, I hear you're even putting eye sensors in in now are, are you because i know that the google glass has a little eye sensor right here and i it can even watch when i wink and take a picture or do something like that. Exactly. Are you guys that's, doing stuff like that? That's that's another uh, basically uh, uh, area that we've been focusing is, is power management uh, due to the form factor of um, this platform. Uh, we try to save battery as much as possible. So the best way to do that was you know to activate the display whenever the user is actually looking at it. Yeah. So sure. that, that was that's the whole concept. Definitely. So when the user looks at it seamlessly, it turns on before the user even knows. And that's smart. So you can actually see that my eye went from, well, in, in, in your case, from here down to here because the display is here, right? Exactly. Wow. Exactly. But I guess kind of to your last, I, I actually kind of want to talk about your last point there yeah. about why do people want, you're saying like, you know, why don't they just use their phone? Right, uh, and you know you, you, we went on to the. It's easy. You're going 40 miles down well, an hour down to right. uh, KT22 well, on a mountain bike. Well, that's exactly it. That's <laughs> you exactly don't want to pull out your phone. Yeah. <laughs> so this product is actually focused on use cases yeah. where you, you your hands are you you're, you can't pull out your phone easily, uh, and you know we've put together kind of a video with you know the announcement of this product that shows some of the use cases where you use this wild firefighting. Uh, being one of them or being an EMT, say you're working on the patient's, a patient, you want to see a patient's vital signs. I mean, you're not going to, hey, let me pull up my phone. You know, I, I, we think that there's so many different use cases where direct to eye, our instant information uh, delivered direct to your eye is valuable. Yeah. Uh, and we are honing in on those with this uh, product. It's really built with a purpose. And, you know, we're focusing on sports, but again, developers will hopefully take some of those, uh, see some of that, those things and make apps for them. Uh, yeah, and other and, and you know other wearable technology that's out there too will go will be there for some of those use cases as well. The, you know, if you're an, um, a rally car driver, mm -hmm. you have a guy next to you who's reading you yep. what's coming up. Yeah, he's the, telling the you, okay, situation. come in ten seconds, we're going to hit a jump, mm -hmm. and then you're going to need to make a right turn. And he's just reading what's coming up, and he's fast enough to do that. It, is the GPS and the and the mapping world fast enough to do that? Can, can I be mountain biking and you're telling me in real time the next turn, take, you know, there's yeah, gonna be a hairpin turn so you better slow down. 
that kind of thing? Well, definitely. It, I can't comment to a specific use case uh, for a specific race uh, track, but uh, definitely with you know, sensors, uh, sensitivities on board, and additional sensors that talks to it with the um, connectivities that it provides. It has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and plus uh, BLA on board uh, that seamlessly talks to peripheral sensors. Um, I guess one of the, the very interesting uh, um, peripheral connectivities we had was connecting to a camera, uh, like an action sports camera that uh, sends the video directly to the eye. So you can set up the camera and look at the activity. Yeah, there. I think you hooked up with Contour, right? Yep, we did. Yeah, we, we had Contour in here, at, yep. um, and they have a Wi-Fi uh, camera that can Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. Bluetooth, Bluetooth, yeah. Bluetooth right it's over to Bluetooth, you. and it's a great technology, very well optimized that transfers higher uh, frame rates uh, over Bluetooth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what if, we're at, uh, I, I keep telling people, we just saw the Apple II with these. Sure. This is the beginning, of, I think, of a 20-year discovery of what it means to have wearable computers. So, yep. you know, we're going to, I was just at SRI last week and we saw binoculars with two 1080p sensors, two 1080p displays, and they were augmenting. They were putting things on the ground that weren't there. And that's we, cool. And you shake the binocular yeah. and the thing is on the ground. And yeah. it's like, whoa, that's cool. Well, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's exactly why we're here. That's yeah. exactly why we're ex- super excited. This category, uh, basically, this product was our dream, and this is the, the future that, as, a, as we saw it. Yeah. Uh, so it's happening, especially now with uh, Google putting their force behind this uh, category, and uh, us basically focusing on the applications and verticals that we think that the needs uh, are eminent and right there. So mm-hmm. we're trying to cover that first. Uh, be- besides, uh, uh, well, before getting into the t- t- you know 24/7 yeah. sort of use cases. It's funny yeah. that you say that because like yeah, for the we launched our first consumer product three years ago heads-up display technology and alpine goggles. And for like three years, we talked around the office about, hey, uh, you know, this, types of, or this type of information is super important. In the future, this is, we're gonna be start seeing a lot more of this, but it was kind of, we were kind of seemed like it, we were by ourselves in the space, especially in affordable heads-up displays. Um, and now, you know, now it's on the news all the time, and it's actually very exciting. Uh, you know, buddies who are not tech guys at all are saying, hey, what a, I'm seeing these devices where you can just put them on, you can get turn-by-turn navigation and things like that. And we're like, yep, we've been talking about that for a long time, but it's, it's, it's definitely like really exciting. The reason I asked you about uh, context, other than I'm writing a book on it, but uh, these glasses, if they know what you're doing mm-hmm. and they can switch modes, very quickly, they can present new opportunities to the to the user, right? That's if I'm riding a bike at 40 miles an hour, I don't want shopping ads coming in my glass, right? <laughs> I might want to see the speed I'm going, I might want to see the map ahead that I'm, uh, you know, I want to see yeah. very sparse information, maybe my heart rate, sure. and yep. heart rate sensor or something like that. But I, 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 I want, I don't want to be in a conversation with Yelp about what the restaurant yeah, I'm going exactly. to eat at that evening, you know. Yeah. But when I stop, maybe I want the world, I want this thing to know that I've stopped and that I'm in a different context now. Totally. And I want to look at the time of day and the and my prop, prop, propensity to do something at that time. For instance, if it's 1 p.m. and we're we've been mountain biking all day long. It, it should say, hey, is it time for lunch? And by exactly. the way, there's three restaurants within a, you know, a five mile ride. Sure. So do you want us to get you a table? You know? yeah. Are you guys thinking of that kind of world where it's going to be that pervasive? Well, it, 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 the def- what, what we see is definitely helping the, uh, the contextual intel- intelligence and the different layers of contextuality that you can provide to the user. So, so the sensors that we have on board and the, uh, the horsepower that this platform provides to the user can definitely help with that. It won't specifically solve the problem from the get-go, but again, with uh, great companies like Google putting their force behind us, because you need a lot of data to be able to provide mm-hmm. contextual yeah. uh, elements to the user. But always we start from basics yeah. of recommending things to, to our users and uh, built on top of that. Yeah. But on that point, um, it's funny that you actually said that because uh, in their next generation of like snow products for next year, uh, we, we're, we've been going through the feature set and, and whatnot, and spoiler, 
basically we've we've said, hey, what happens when you you ski down? Okay, you don't want to be bothered. You want to have your, your dashboard, your your metrics there. But we know when you're on the ski lift now. Yeah. And that's one use case that you'll see in our or you very likely see that in our snow product this year where it's like, okay, well, what is the what is the uh, the athlete or the, the skier want to see when they go up the ski, uh, the ski lift. And it's probably a review of what they just did on that last run. How many jumps potentially. No. <laughs> we all work on the ski lift. Come on. <laughs> Emails, notifications, yeah. phone calls I missed yeah. while going down. You know? Well, you could, you could have, you, like, you know, uh, you could divert all phone calls till, to, or until you go up, start going up the lift, right? Or emails or whatever it is if you have apps. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's just one use case. A lunchtime, hey, look, there's a, you know, this restaurant's close to you, so maybe yeah. you want to go there. Yeah. yeah, and the ski resorts are really interested in how does this change customer service and stuff like that. For sure, exactly. Um, where am I going to go with this? Why is Recon going to stay in the OS business when Google is doing an OS for their wearables? And it, do you see that as being com competitive, or do you see Recon's DNA as being more the hardware? Tell me. Well, the strategy around this, uh, this particular OS is to make it easier for developers to develop apps while we can develop uh, applications and features for it much easier ourselves um, because of all the connectivities that we provide for activity in the sports. You need to be able to talk to different sensors at different times. You need to have all these different radios working in tandem. Uh, so you need a versatile and flexible OS to be able to manage all of that. Yeah, I so guess like Ant Plus is an example of that. So the, the, the device has Ant Plus on there, which I don't think, uh, I don't know how many operating systems out there support Ant Plus. What is that? Uh, Ant Plus is the, the, the communication protocol that, or is one of the uh, big ones for like cycling uh, bike, bike sensors and stuff like that. Got so it. in the cycling world. Uh, so that's an interesting point too. This does not exist by itself, this product, right? I'm wearing a basis watch now that measures heart rate. Yep. If you're a triathlete, you have all sorts of devices on sure. your bike or maybe yep. even a heart rate sensor or something like that. Exactly. Like, Are you guys thinking about uh, a way to get the other parts of the industry to talk to your glass so that I can see Definitely. Yes, data? Yeah, we Art are. It's ongoing right now. Uh, some ex exciting connectivities we'll, we'll announce as, uh, as we go with the official announcement of the, the product launch, yeah. For sure. Very cool. I mean, our, our, our key value proposition is direct our instant information, deliver it effortlessly, uh, uh, and without messing up your sport, whatever it is, whatever yeah. you're doing your activity. Uh, and so if that's what we're kind of what we're offering, uh, you know, there are some great products out there in different verticals that we might go into down the road that are already out there uh, that have great networks behind them and uh, that we, you know, why not integrate with those guys. It's interesting that you added a camera onto this product. Cause if I was a GoPro, I'd really be worried about, oh man, I, I built a whole brand around these, uh, you know, sports cameras that go on helmets and stuff like that. But this first person kind of a camera is just life changing for me. I, that, that's the first thing I noticed is my photography has totally gone into a different place because of this. It camera. is definitely, I agree with you, it's a different experience. It, it never gets into the uh, wide you know, field of view, uh, super rugged cameras that, for example, GoPro or Contour uh, bring to the table. But if, if you're going around for, a, for example, a cycling and uh, you see a, a, a good shot that you really want to capture, you can quickly do that as opposed to having a GoPro with you or, uh, you know, yeah. Camera, yeah, would you? And the the shot would always be lined up ex yep. as well, right? So, you know, no, that's, really that's cool, kind of cool. You know? I mean, I can say, okay, glass, take a picture, yeah. and boom, I know I got you both there, sure. right? Because I'm looking at you. Yeah. So. But GoPro and Contour make awesome products. So yeah, but yeah. I I think they need to get into your space to to uh, stay relevant because wearable cameras with these displays are really a far superior way to take video or photos than putting a, hel a camera on your helmet. It definitely is super easy to take photos with them. I know I've tried Google Glass and with our product, it's, yeah, it, you have it on, it's just, right, so. But in, the, in the meantime, we, we provide that connectivity to those mm -hmm. cameras. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that makes the product more social if in case you wanna share some of that shot or mm -hmm. you wanna share a video stream of that to your friends, that's, that's something that is on the works. Let's talk about safety uh, because uh, I'm I'm scared of riding with this or running with it because if if you fall and once in a while you, people fall and get accidents and stuff, 
I'm scared about the safety of this thing getting jammed right into my eye. I, that's, usually that's why I bought that's Oakley right. glasses so that yeah. you can uh, really protect your eyes yeah. against all sorts of stuff being thrown in your eyes or, or hitting it with, uh, on a fall or something Yeah, that's, like that. that's, that's the area that we have a lot of experience based uh, on the ESQ products that we designed with our partners. So most of the products we, uh, we designed, they, went, uh, they, they underwent a, a very, very um, uh, heavy testing, so impact testing, shock testing, and safety testing uh, sort of cases. So goes forward with, uh, with the sunglasses, we'll do the same. Um, we'll have to make sure that uh, the product is fully safe yeah. for, for the users to use. People are going to be mountain biking with this down crazy trails, and they will fall just like people fall with our ski product now. And I we guess. have to make sure the product can handle that. Yeah. Additional comment to that, uh, very first co consideration that we have uh, decided to position the screen down below the eye is uh, exactly for safety consideration. So it's right outside your proof of field of view, you won't see anything and it's an active choice. If you like to look at the, the data, you basically roll roll the eye down and you see the, the data right there in front of you. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's pretty interesting. I went to an uh, optometrist and had my eyes checked out and she said, uh, this, she approved this because mm -hmm. she said, okay, the image is at distance so your eye's not gonna get sore by looking at this. But she said, because it's up, your eye blinks less often when you look up than when you look down. Yeah, so okay. she said your eye, if you really stared at this uh, screen up for a while, uh, your eye might get dried out. But she yeah. said it wouldn't cause any damage, it would just feel yeah. dried out. But it's interesting that you put it down yeah. for this. this yeah, there was uh, some re research, that we have published some papers uh, around that, and ha basically eye dominance in the right eye, and it's easier for eye muscles to actually roll down as opposed to, to, uh, to up, so I can yeah. potentially. By the way, you're putting this on the right side, just like the Google Glasses. Uh, if you're blind in the right eye, can you, st you you're not offering left eye versions of this yet? Not, not, not uh, at this point in time, but yeah. could be something that we consider in the future. Yeah, mm -hmm. Google uh, says the same thing. So they're, they're saying, yeah, oh, right now it's going to be a red eye thing, and uh, they're, they're uh, not sure about the market for left eye. Mm -hmm. um, in here, you have what, a battery over on this side? Yep. and then. So you're, you're trying to provide more balance to the weight? Yeah, so the, the, the Google Glass puts the battery on one side. Sure. Right? And it's, it's fairly light and fairly balanced. Yep. For a sports guy, I yeah, think. Yeah, that's exactly it, right. For sure. the, the, the whole uh, concept was to, to make the design uh, more balanced for uh, activity in the sports. Yep. So if you're varying it, uh, uh, you know, the, the whole shock and uh, vibration doesn't cause it to, to slip down your nose or fall off. Um, so the, besides the, uh, the size reduction and weight reduction, uh, the, the weight distribution was a key factor into our design and goes on with you know, helmet compatibility and certain you know, headwear that you're putting on as well. Is and the device weighs, uh, you know, j the, 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 the guts here with the battery and the computing is about 30 grams, so it's, it's quite light. I mean, I took it for a ride the other day, just fooling around with it and it, you, you don't notice it, it's yeah. very light, so yeah. No, I, I'm already used to having something on my face, and, th and this is really pretty mm. interesting. Uh, what else do we need to know about this? It's pretty uh, straightforward. Is, is this a reference design that you're going to sell to different manufacturers, like you did with uh, Oakley's Airway, or are you going to are are we going to see a recon brand brand? That is definitely on the table, but okay. we're not talking about it at this point in time. Okay. So um, just stay tuned and uh, we'll exactly. see you later this year, yep. right? Yeah. This is a product that's going to be on store shelves by Christmas? This product will be available this year. Wow. Uh, so, yeah. Yet another gonna... thing I have to put on the gadget budget. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can hook you up with one. Uh, but yeah, it'll be shipping this year. And so, uh, I mean, that's, uh, I'm sure people will be excited about that. Very cool. Well, thanks. And thanks for dropping by right before Google I.O. We're going to thanks for having us. have this video up uh, shortly afterwards. And it's, it's a pretty interesting product that you guys are building. And yeah, thank so. you for having us. Can't wait to see it. Where do we learn more about you guys? Uh, ReconInstruments.com. Uh, for this product, uh, for an early view of the product, it's ReconInstruments.com front slash jet. Uh, and that is going to be the name of the product. It's called ReconJet. Very cool. Thanks so much for bringing it and showing it to me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah.